Now, a stampede erupting during the funeral procession for top Iranian general Qasim Soleimani. Iranian state television says at least 35 people have been killed in the stampede in the general's hometown of Kerman. And dozens more have been injured. State media says that the burial of General Soleimani has been delayed due to the massive crowds. Nearly a million people had gathered to pay their final respects on the final day of mourning. General Soleimani was widely seen as Iran's second most powerful figure after Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran have escalated sharply since General Soleimani was killed in a U.S. airstrike last week in Iraq. The Iranian parliament has passed a bill designating all U.S. forces as terrorists over the general's death. Lawmakers have also voted to boost the elite uh, Quds uh, forces budget by 20 or by 220 million dollars. That's the foreign operations arm of Iran's Revolutionary Guards that was headed by General Soleimani. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has also confirmed that the U.S. declined to issue him a visa to travel to New York for upcoming meetings of the U.N. Security Council. Mr. Zarif offered a blunt response. ایالات متحده جواب قاطع و حتمی گستاخی خود را در زمان و مکانی که حد اکثر درد را احساس کند خواهد گرفت. For more on the fallout, Simon Marks joins us from Washington. Uh, Simon, uh, mounting threats from Iran, as you've just heard, what's been the reaction in the U.S. Capitol? Well, uh, President Trump continues to match uh, Iran tweet for tweet. Every time he tweets something, the Supreme Leader uh, of Iran, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, tweets back at him. Uh, here in Washington, people are nervous. They're worried about what is going to come next. And they were stunned by yesterday's turn of events when uh, the Pentagon actually sent the Iraqi Defense Ministry uh, a letter saying that the United States was going to start pre-positioning troops in Baghdad, begin to start preparing for their eventual full withdrawal from Iraq. The Pentagon later said that that letter had been transmitted to the Iraqi Defense Ministry by mistake. It was purely a draft. All of that fueling the sense that policy towards Iran and Iraq here is being made up by the Trump administration on the fly. Now, within just the last few minutes, President Trump has retweeted the Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, prominent foreign policy voice, very close uh, to President Donald Trump, who has written on Twitter, as to what happens next, it should be clear to Iran that President Trump will not sit idly by if our people and interests are threatened. In other words, uh, Donald Trump seems to be endorsing the view here that the ball is firmly in Iran's court and as President Trump himself has previously said, uh, in the event that the Iranians do target American military personnel uh, and American uh, interests and assets, whether it's in the region or anywhere else, he stands ready, as he's put it on one occasion now, if necessary, to take disproportionate uh, military responses directed at Iran. So uh, this remains a perilous situation and it's become apparent over the last 96 hours or so that there are very few restraining influences around President Trump any longer. The key advisers surrounding him uh, do not appear to have the capacity uh, to uh, get him to delay action or to think through completely the repercussions of what he is planning, which adds to the notion coupled with Iran's unpredictability, that this is a very perilous series of circumstances that we're all looking at. Yeah, so if that's the case, then there have also been calls for the U.S. Congress to pass legislation to keep a President Trump from perhaps, as you say, going to maybe, you know, escalating this to the extent that it goes to war against Iran. So do you think that will actually happen? And, you know, if it does, will it actually stop Mr. Trump? Well, so veteran observers of Washington, Glenda, uh, are obviously aware that every single American president at some point during the course of his presidency has a battle with Congress over just how much power in foreign policy and defense terms uh, the president has at his fingertips. The House of Representatives is clearly, because the Democrats uh, control it, going to pass a bill aimed at tying President Trump's hands and uh, banning him, forbidding him. 
uh, from deciding to go to war uh, with Iran. That measure clearly, equally, will not pass the United States Senate because the Republicans there are in the majority and at the moment they seem unlikely to embrace this particular notion that you tie the president's hands firmly. So there's going to continue being this push me pull you uh, between the uh, president uh, and members of Congress over just how much uh, freedom he's got uh, to decide exactly what to do uh, hour by hour with regards to Iran. But as previous American presidents have done, Barack Obama, remember, carried out an extensive campaign uh, of extrajudicial killings uh, in the region. Uh, this president, too, is much more likely to act first and worry about congressional approval later. Well, thanks very much, uh, Ms. Simon. Indeed, everyone will be keeping a close watch, but this time in the land of Twitter for what's going to happen. Thank you very much, Ms. Simon, speaking to us from Washington, D.C.